I would rather take my chances with that, which has proven valuable, durable, uh, liquid and desirable for thousands of years and let other people test Bitcoin at their own expense, <laughs> not at mine. Hello, Robert Kiyosaki and the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. And once again, this is part four of a four part series. If you missed any one of the one, two or three, please go back to Rich Dad Radio. All, our, all of our program, programs are archived at Rich Dad Radio because I think this is the most important series we'll ever put on because our dollar, I mean, the reason the Rich Dad was founded was because of this. And I read this book in 80, 83, 84. It's how our wealth is stolen via our money, taxation and inflation. So this is, this is part four, and it's why is silver important? Because that's why, I, I mean, I get in, I'll say it again, I get sick and tired. I argue with people who would rather save this stuff. And the one thing I'll say, I'm gonna go, go into is here, this is gold, this is silver, this is real, and this is fake. Very simple. You can you can print this, but you can't print this or this. But in the in financial literacy, there's a word called liquidity. How liquid, Andy, is this gold piece? How fast can you convert it to cash for me? It's probably more liquid than anything on the planet. I mean, you could go into into Phoenix uh, and see Charles and or Jim and, and bang, you'd have cash. You could send it to any deal or any pawn shop. It's more liquid than just about anything. It's a misconception that it lacks liquidity. And, and that's why when I wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad over here, I don't know where it is, savers are losers. Instead of saving this, save gold and silver. And if you need <coughs> cash, you're in. You know, how, how liquid is gold and silver to you? Immediately liquid. It, it is one of the most liquid uh, sellable items on the planet universally around the globe. Thank you. Mr. Clark? Well, the beautiful thing about it is you can establish a price for gold as far as liquidating it. And I can show you how that's done, taking the spot price and the premium, whether it's a uh, right, yeah. discount I'm or sorry. positive liquid, to liquid. the gold price. Very easy. As fast as you can hand the gold over, I'll hand you the money and everybody go on about their business. Do I have to wait for you to uh, get a second mortgage on your house? No, nope, just <laughs> hand you the money. Boom. <laughs> Charles, how liquid is the silver and this gold? There is nothing more liquid, period. End of story. It's the most liquid asset in the world and has been for thousands of years. So with that, that's what people are saving this in case the bottom falls out. I'd still rather save this and and this. So let's go to silver and the silver stacker who calls who called me a questionable person. I've been saving silver since 64. And I want to thank Republic Monetary Exchange, Jim and Charles, for giving me these coins here. There, why is this coin so important there? It's a Kennedy half dollar. It's a silver. Jim? Well, it's it's a treasury issued coin that has a known finite amount of silver in it. And you can uh, look it up. It's, and it has a price based on the silver uh, spot. Why we talked in series one, that that coin is worth about $9, 18 times the price of silver. So taking the amount of silver in a thousand uh, dollar bag, you come up with basically the spot plus a little bit of a premium. So it's not because of the date. There's nothing special about the date in 1964. It's the content of silver that makes it valuable. Right. That was the date it changed. Yeah. 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 65, you got garbage. Yeah. 64, you have value. You have real money. Charles, what is Gresham's law? So when I was a young man and they took the silver out of the, uh, the currency, my dad would come home at the end of the day He'd take the silver coins out of his pocket. He didn't have any special expertise in it. He wasn't an economist, but he'd take the silver coins out of his pocket and put them in a candy dish in the living room. And the other coins, the fake money coins, he'd spend, take to the grocery store and spend. Now, to my great shame, Robert, I don't mind confessing this to you because we're all friends here, but I was a teenager at the time and when I needed money to go to the movie, when I needed money to do something with my friends, what did I do? 
I dug into that dish in the living room that had the real silver, not knowing that that was real money and that my dad was saving it because he knew as thousands of people all over the world know that real money persists and fake money goes bad. Well, then that bottom line is that Gresham's law is very simple. Bad money drives good money out That's of circulation. Gresham's law. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, so Dana, you're the, you're the, you're the go-to guy on this one with rare coins. What do you have, what do you have to say about, the numismatic value of coins. Well, the collector value uh, above the intrinsic metal value is what we call the numismatic value of a coin. So we've had a couple of really big buying surges over the last 20 years, primarily due to the great financial crisis and due to uh, COVID and the explosion of government debt. So we're seeing the collector value of the old historic coins grow because there's simply more and more people on the planet, there's more and more people that are trained to buy precious metals now because of the two financial crises we've had, and there's less and less product to go around. So you can buy the old dimes and quarters still at a reasonable price. Uh, you know, a 1964 quarter would buy you a gallon of gas. A 1965 quarter back in 1965 would buy you a gallon of gas. One's got silver in it, one doesn't. Today, a 1964 quarter will get you a gallon and a half of gas while that regular quarter in your pocket won't. So there's, there's a market for collector coins that's more supply and demand driven than underlying precious metals driven. And there's a way actually to leverage profits if you're buying on the cheap on the collector coins, if you know market timing. But for most people, you just want precious metals for precious metals sake in this environment that is highly debt le uh, leveraged. Right. And as I said, for full, full disclosure, I buy from these guys, number one, for their information, their wisdom, their dedication to their business. That's why you silver stackers out there, you know, 50 years from now, I'll talk to you. But until then, you don't have any, you know, no historical stuff in. And I'm glad you're stacking silver. But Dana, let me ask this question. How do people rip people off? I mean, you were the president of the Numismatic Association. How do people get ripped off with rare coins? Well, not understanding the fundamental value, uh, not shopping around with the internet, you know, going after vintage coins is so much, uh, it's so much easier to, to comparatively shop. But most importantly, you have to find a dealer with a longstanding business in the marketplace and a reputation of trust and reliability. That's really what you need if you're going to be in the vintage coin market, because it's an unregulated business. We do have uh, opportunist operators in the marketplace. So you de do need to do your homework and you more importantly need to find someone you can trust. And the best way to do a back check is to ask them what they'll pay for that same item to get a buy sell spread. And not only from that dealer that you're interested in doing business with, but you can shop around a little bit, calling dealers like ourselves to back check us. Uh, as you do, Robert, when you're interested in making purchases, you know, you check the market and uh, that's the most cost effective way to make sure you're getting a good value. Andy, because you, what do you say? How do people get ripped I, off of rare coins? I, I think Dana said it very, very well. I think that when you talk about nowadays, anyways, when you talk about buying, whether it be bullion or numismatics, you're buying a commodity. And that commodity is comparable with other companies. And to Dana's point, which is very well stated, the when you're buying a commodity, you buy the person, you buy the company, you buy the reputation. And in a federally non-regulated industry, that's much more important. You can very easily be penny wise and pound foolish, but look, you know, much like being one of the the, the companies on this show, you understand what that means, reputation. Uh, we are a reflection of your reputation on this show. And so we all take that very seriously. I think that means we take our business very seriously. And, and to save a few cents to work with a new company who doesn't have that longstanding reputation can be disastrous. So there are con artists in every industry, especially one that is gaining more notability and notoriety. So I think what, what Dana said is spot on. Work with a company that has a good reputation that's been around the block and, and you'll more often than not have a great experience. Good. So Jimmy, you, you ever have somebody come in and say, 
I was told this is worth fifty thousand dollars. Have you? All the time. I there are shows that come on at two o'clock in the morning for the insomniac old people that they see. I had nineteen sixty five Kennedy half dollar that's has a little bit of silver in it, but not much. And they hype it up that this is twenty nine dollars for this coin. They're running out of them. It's been graded by uh, one of the grading services. When we run out, well, we run out, and you know you could cash these in any time. And it, it's it's a scam. And as as my colleagues uh, Andy and Dana have said, reputation, reputation, reputation. And it's kind of like uh, you're going to rent a condo somewhere across the country. You check VRBO and you want to see what people have said about it. You want to look at the Google reviews, maybe look at uh, Better Business Bureau, where they stand with them. How long have they been in business? Hi, everyone. I'm Kim Kiyosaki, co-host of the Rich Dad Radio Show. And I want to thank today's sponsor, our friends at Gold Alliance. You know, we should all be concerned about high inflation, a looming recession, the very troubled banking system, and out of control spending in Washington. And the fact is during every major crisis in US history, many of those who fail to prepare watch their savings, investments, and retirement funds plummet. While others with the foresight to own gold help preserve their wealth and purchasing power. Now we're facing several major crises at once and we may soon face even more economic turmoil. So please don't wait, consider gold and put yourself on the road to financial peace of mind. The new free 2023 gold guide from our friends at Gold Alliance can show you how. Just visit www.freegoldguide.com forward slash Robert or call 1-800-473-4585. Republican governor and conservative commentator Mike Huckabee says Gold Alliance is the only gold provider he recommends to his friends and family. Please visit freegoldguide.com forward slash Robert or call now at 1-800-473-4585. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Kim Kiyosaki, co-host of the Rich Dad Radio Show. Robert and I have warned that 2023 was going to be a roller coaster of volatility. After all, the stock market is largely flat this year, except for a handful of tech companies. And other asset classes are struggling to meet expectations. One survey reveals that living paycheck to paycheck is the most common lifestyle in America, even for those making six-figure incomes. Combined with hundreds of thousands of layoffs in just the last few months, it's clear a financial storm is brewing. The question to ask yourself is, are you safe? For years, Robert and I and other investors have been putting more and more money into assets that can still climb when the stock market flatlines. One investment that doesn't seem to be affected by the ups and downs of the stock market is art. In fact, one of our close friends and advisor recommends art as his number one asset protection. Even more, contemporary art prices have outpaced the S&P 500's total return over the last 27 years by 136%. If you think art as an investment is something you want to pursue, then there is a vehicle that allows you to do that without investing millions, thanks to Masterworks, our longtime sponsor. Their platform lets you invest in shares of painting by icons like Picasso and Banksy. Masterworks now has 800 million in assets under management, but thanks to our friends at Masterworks, you can skip their wait list. Just click the link in the description for this episode. Offerings have sold out in minutes, but Rich Dad listeners can skip the wait list going to masterworks.art slash rich dad. That's masterworks.art slash rich dad. See important disclosures at masterworks.com slash CD. Feeling powerless over current events and your financial future? Financial freedom is your freedom. Robert Kiyosaki is the best-selling author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Over 40 million people have taken Robert's advice. Now it's your turn. Attend Robert's free virtual wealth building event. Claim your free access now at richdadfree.com. Don't wait, access is limited. Go to richdadfree.com. That's richdadfree.com. Charles, have you ever had somebody come in and say, I bought this rare coin and it wasn't rare? Oh, yeah, all the time. And uh, I, I feel a great deal of remorse and sadness for the people. 
But uh, I want to reiterate what uh, Dana and Andy and Jim and yourself have said, that you know you are buying reputation. And uh, the reason that you've invited us on our show, Robert, it's flattering to all of us, but it's because you value your listeners, you value the readers of your books and stuff, and you know from experience, from that's, real hard money experience, how we all operate. Thank, and that's a, a great well, tribute thank you. to you. The last thing is, why is silver important? And Andy said, you said that every Tomahawk missile how much silver is in a Tomahawk missile? Almost exactly 500 ounces. And it's interesting when you look at the information out of the, the Silver Institute that talks about where the supply is going, uh, the demand coming from, they never mention anything in the military, which is an interesting deep dive, something we should talk about on another show, the military industrial complex and their need for silver and high tech weaponry. But from a standpoint of supply versus demand, the, the supply in silver is very compelling. It's found in nature in a form called epithermal, just like your skin is epidermis. Epithermal means near the surface. Big deposits were found years ago. So this will be the third year in a row of large structural deficits between supply and demand. In terms of an investment, I don't know that you could find a more compelling investment. Massively increasing demand, digitally green applications, military applications, and monetary applications at a period of time when the supply is in a structural deficit, meaning it's getting worse and worse and worse, not getting any better. And I just find it to be perhaps the most compelling investment of my career. I would go as far as saying it's the trade of a generation. And I don't say that flippantly or lightly. Yeah, the definition of intelligence. If you agree with me, you're intelligent. I think this is the biggest mm -hmm. investment today. It's about 35 bucks, give and take. So Jim, why is this, why is this an industrial metal? Why, what makes it intrinsic value more, more valuable than gold in well, some ways? Yeah, so as we've been talking, all the uses for silver, but they've also had silver as money throughout the ages as well. I call silver the poor man's gold, where some people could buy a tube of gold coins for $40,000, you can get a tube of silver, 20 pieces for about $700, six or $700. So you've got something that's smaller uh, in divisibility and can be traded. Uh, and since it is a monetary metal in the sense that coins throughout the ages have been minted with silver, the industrial part of it is the biggest part, but it, it uh, also answers all the requirements to be real money too. It's being used in, it's in electric electronics. It's a water purifier. It's used in solar panels, EVs and all that. Even medicine. medicine. So Charles, why, why is silver important? Well, for one thing, silver has actually been used as money longer in more places throughout history than gold itself. And in fact, uh, the word for money is derived from the word from silver in many, many languages. But you go into Costco, you go into Costco with a gold coin and they're going to give you, you know, 60,000 loaves of bread. You've got to have a smaller unit of purchasing power for a crisis, you know, because 60,000 loaves of bread from Costco is going to go bad real fast. So it's, it's, a, it's a good way to have a smaller unit of purchasing power for the inevitable crisis, the one that's headed, headed our way. And uh, during normal times, people look at it, silver, for its industrial capabilities. But boy, when things get bad, people suddenly wake up again and they go, oh, yeah, money. And as Jim said, and you've said, it's God's money, it's the people's money, and it's uh, negotiable for daily purchases in Venezuela. Just to give you one, one example, uh, uh, in Venezuela, people found there, during the worst of the period under Chavez and those clowns that they could feed their family for a month with an ounce of silver. They might have been able to pay off their mortgage with an ounce of gold, but when it came to the daily needs of putting food on the table, there was nothing like Thank silver. You. And Dana, as far as you know, is silver money all over the world? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, universally accepted around the world. Uh, and Andy's uh, point, I think, is very prescient right now. We have about a 25% deficit between the amount of silver produced every year in the last couple of years and the demand for silver. And through the Green Revolution, the demand for silver is only going to increase in historical times, the value of silver relative to gold was 20 parts silver to one part gold. Post-World War II, that's been about 40 to one. In modern times now, it's about 85 to one, which means silver is 
dramatically undervalued relative to the historical value of gold. And that can only go narrower as silver plays catch up. And I think Andy's right. The, the way the pricing structure is right now for silver, it has tremendous opportunity. While gold setting all-time highs, silver is less than 50% of its two previous all-time highs, making it a very opportunistic uh, value in today's market. And then w- final word, I, 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 I always say gold, silver, and Bitcoin. And I know nothing about Bitcoin. I just know some very smart people are in it. And thank God I bought early. But Andy, what, what are your thoughts when it comes to Bitcoin compared to gold, gold and silver? You know, I don't know a lot about it. I, I I don't believe it needs to be either or. To me, they speak the same language in the respect that they are both pushing back against a brain dead monetary system, and and it's inspired a generation of of younger people who are aw- awoken to that. I think the, the 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 problem is people thinking it has to be one or the other. There's room in a portfolio for both. They both are trying to accomplish the same thing. The difference to me is that when I talk to people about gold and silver, I never really speak to the to the to making a big profit. To me, it's wealth. It's wealth that's that's outlived everything. And although yes, when you talk about silver, especially, you know, it's coming out of the ground at seven to one, but priced at 80 to one, I mean that's an amazing opportunity. You can make a lot of money, but that's not why I own it. I own it because when you make a lot of money in gold or silver, it is the dollar that is falling, not gold and silver that are rising. And it it is protection against a falling dollar. When you talk about Bitcoin, most people's aspirations, I believe, is to get wealthy. And I think if that is what you are doing, if you make money in Bitcoin, take some off the table and put it in God's money and and take those chips off the blackjack table and stuff them in your pocket. So when you leave the casino at the end of the night, you have some money to show for it. Uh, Jim, your comments, gold, silver, Bitcoin. Okay, I believe in gold and silver and have for over 50 years. I believe at some point Bitcoin and all the rest of the uh, digital currencies are going to vaporize. The Fed wants to come out with a uh, central bank digital currency. They have a habit of being able to knock out the competition, and the private money is competition. I missed Bitcoin in 2009, was introduced to it. I didn't understand it. I still don't understand it. And I think it was Warren Buffett that says, if I don't understand something, I'm not going to get involved in it. So I've never touched Bitcoin. I don't plan to. And I'm going to stick with gold and silver. Thank you. Mr. Charles. Well, my sons give me a little bit of Bitcoin. Very little, I'm sorry to say. But every year for Christmas or on my birthday. So I have a little, not significant enough. But I keep an eye on it, and uh, like Jim, and perhaps like the rest of uh, uh, your guests here, I would rather take my chances with that, which has proven valuable, durable, uh, liquid, and desirable for thousands of years, and let other people test Bitcoin at their own expense, not at mine. <laughs> and with that, I want to thank you, gentlemen. Like I said, for full disclosure, I buy from you guys. I trust you. But, the, but gold and silver is money all throughout the world. I can buy it anywhere. But I can't find friends like you guys. I can't find people with wealth of information, their dedication to study, and to understand why they do what they do. So I think I want to thank the four of you, and I wish you guys the best of the New Year's. And uh, let's keep let's keep up the work because this is our time. It is the great American empire is going down because every empire has gone down when they took fiat currency and turned it into toilet paper. And that's what we're doing today. So thank you. Thank you, sir. And thank you all for watching Rich Dad Radio Show. So I say thank you, all of you, to our four guests. Remember, uh, we don't make any recommendations, but for full disclosure, I do buy from this gentleman. But the reason the Rich Dad Company was founded was because of this book by Dr. R. Buck, Mr. Fuller, Considering one of the greatest geniuses of our geniuses of our times. Harvard calls Fuller as one of their greatest graduates. But Fuller never graduated from Harvard. Uh, he had the same problem many of us had. He liked to drink and chase women. But he's still considered one of the greatest geniuses of our times. And Rich Dad was founded to keep his work alive here. So I thank you for listening to the Rich Dad Radio Show. Listen, there's real money and there's fake money. And please get smarter and work and save real money. 
And uh, all of our programs are archived at Rich Dad Radio, so you can share that with friends and family. Remember, there's four parts. We have four friends on the show. Please, very important time to know this is, this is fake. This is real. Thank you for watching Rich Dad Radio. Thank you for watching the Rich Dad Radio Show. This podcast is a presentation of Rich Dad Media Network.